Well, hello. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about a uh, really common and pervasive disease of trees and shrubs in Alberta and across the prairies and all sorts of places. Uh, it's a fungal pathogen, goes by the fancy Latin name of Apiosporina morbosa, which it's commonly known as black knot of prunus. Black knot is, as I say, very common. And as I said also, it's of prunus. And if you're not up on your Latin and your botany, prunus includes all of the cherries. So that would include, in our neck of the woods, it would include things like the mayday, the choke cherry, the sour cherries, the pin cherries. Um, it also includes plums and almonds. Um, and a few of the sort of ornamental cherries, things like Amor cherry, um, stuff like that. So anyways, quite a, quite a few species around. It's very common. You'll see it in almost any rural or urban municipality or almost any sort of place where you find a, a planting of some sort of prunus, whether native or, or deliberate, uh, you're going to find it. And it's a big problem. It spreads all over the place. And um, I want to talk to you a little bit more about today and how to, how to deal with it, how to recognize it and how to deal with it. So one of the things to recognize with black knot is is that people don't see it. Like it's honestly, it's all over the place, but until you point it out to them, they, they don't see it. And once you do, they'll never miss it. It's it's kind of fascinating to, to do it. I once went for a walk with a sibling and he had never noticed the black knot. And I pointed it out and from then on, he couldn't stop seeing it and it was everywhere. So it is what it is. And uh, the problem is, is that we need to help people recognize it so they can know to get rid of it because it, once you have one tree, it just spreads through, can spread through everywhere. One neighborhood tree can, can take care of the rest of the neighborhood for you. So the most characteristic symptom of this is uh, it produces a black tar-like gall. It's affectionately known or more disgustingly known as poop on a stick or, or whatever. It, that's what it looks like. It really looks like somebody just sort of put a gnarly black or brownish colored um, swelling and it's all kind of Correctly, you can see here in the pictures what it looks like um, and you can see it it takes all sorts of different forms so you'll see the sort of the classic one out on the end of a branch but it also can form on different spots on a branch junction or um, along a branch and it can be a bunch of little black lumps or it can be that big um, sausagey looking thing they generally get up to about six inches long but they can be, of course, bigger if you've got multiple infections in that one spot. Now, the key of this is that the galls start out as little, those, those mature galls that are black and tar-like, um, throw out spores in the spring, and those infect the growing points of the host plant. And um, for the first while, you're not going to notice any of the, uh, of, of any swelling. What happens is the pathogen infects and it causes some changes in the cells and then you get that swelling. So at first it's just this little tiny thing that you're not going to see, but one, it doesn't take too long and all of a sudden you've got, you know, these black swellings. And um, that's important and I'll mention that a little bit more later, why that's critical. But the point is, is that these galls are throwing out spores in the spring and um, can make quite a mess. Now in a planting, you'll see quite a few throughout the tree. And here's an example of some different ones that where you can see it in different sort of uh, sort of shelterable plantings or just in a, in a regular tree. And um, the other thing to understand is, is that this pathogen spreads internally. So it goes not just inside of that gall and throws out spores, but it also spreads through the branch. And so that's important as well in management, because if you don't aren't careful where you're cutting, and if you're pruning it out, um, you could end up just having it spread um, a bunch. So, of course, I've described the symptoms and, and looks at as these galls mature, um, they eventually can become inactive. There's plenty of other ones that are active, but um, you'll notice ones that have a bit of a orangey color to them or they got a little bit of a dusting of something and they've been colonized by another um, pathogen or something. And they're no longer active, but they're still ugly and um, uh, can be quite a bit of a problem. So, um, but just so you recognize that they, what they look like. Now, when it comes to management, that's the, the key. And we always focus on removing the inoculum. And inoculum is a fancy word for the amount of 
the reproductive potential of that pathogen. So if we have 10 galls and we remove 10 galls, there's suddenly 10 less galls that are producing spores that could potentially be spreading to other areas. So that's what we're really focused on is knocking it down. And it does take time. It's not a, well, I got in there and I cleaned that tree out and, uh, and be done. It actually takes some time because often you miss those new little green ones or the little galls that are, they look a little olive green or whatever to start with. Well, you'll miss them. And so over time, even if you're looking at the tree, you're going to miss a few. So it's going to take you a few years to clean it out. But if you're diligent and you're vigilant, you can, can clean them up. Now, you can see here in this, um, in this short video how here in this neighborhood um, choke cherry, it's just down the alley from me, and here's this you know characteristic gall, and you can see it's in there. And so when you want to prune it, you want to cut it at least six inches beyond the point of the end of the gall because you want to watch out for that growth that's inside because if you cut through that and then cut again, you're going to potentially be spreading. Or if you cut it off and it's still got stuff inside, it's going to continue to spread and you'll get more gall formation and you didn't clean it up. So as you can see, I prune it out um, and snip it back at a good point where it's not going to leave a stub, which will produce other pathogens or whatever. You want to cut it off at a nice growing, at a, at a junction, at a, at a branch point that makes sense. Now, in some cases, it gets very, very um, infected and you're going to have to just cut this thing off horizontally at the ground. It's some trees just get very, very infected. If you've got a growth on the trunk or anything like that, it's going to be very tr challenging to take out. Um, and so sometimes it's best to just call it quits and cut it out. Once you've got it cut and pruned off, don't just, just drop it on the ground, burn it, bury it, or dispose of it somewhere else because it can continue to throw out spores for a time. We always recommend that the pruning happen in winter, in dormant season, the reason for that is it's easier to see it. It also means that those galls are dormant, they're not throwing out spores, and so you're not potentially spreading the disease elsewhere. But um, yeah, generally from now until um, April in our neck of the woods, so um, that's what you can do. Now I should caution that if you're in a situation where you've got a big tree and you've got some major issues, and it's going to be a lot of trouble to get up and in there to clean it out, it's not a blow to your ego to hire a pro they'll do it safely quickly and effectively and um, they can have the right tools and the right equipment to get it done quickly so don't hesitate to hire a pro if you have to but anyways i hope you learned a little bit about black knot and uh, you and i can work to get it out of our communities